Hi, welcome to I Tried to Eat My Phone. I am Karen Jaworski and I'm joined today by my dear friend, Christy. And we're gonna talk a little bit about travel today. I know from some of Christy's pictures, uh, I, I think when I think of you and travel, I think of uh, your pictures from Germany, like going okay. to Oktoberfest. Mm -hmm. uh, but so can we open with that? Talk, talk Absolutely. about what, what, what <laughs> was your, ha, have you been there a couple times for Oktoberfest? So my husband has been twice. He went okay. uh, last year. And that was to celebrate his 50th birthday. And so he went with his high school or his college best friend who was also turning 50. And so um, I think we had done it about five or six years before, I'm sure. And my brother met us out there. And I'm sure that's a much different experience with your wife and her brother versus your best friend from college. <laughs> so, now, was, this, was that your first time going? Have, had you yes. been there before? Okay. So, well, okay. So I, I had never been to Europe before. Um, we, tr we were planned, we had planned a trip right before my mom passed away when I was 12. And so I was going to go with my mom, my grandma and my great aunt. And then that trip fell apart. Um, then I was going to go to Cornwall, um, which is where part of my ancestors are from, um, in England. And right before that trip was planned, my grandfather fell and hit his head. And so, and was never the same since, frankly. So, so I was sort of like over two <laughs> on it. And I actually made us before Germany. And then again, before our trip to England, um, I made my husband get travel insurance just because I was like, this is so doomed. <laughs> so it was a little bit nerve wracking both times. And, you know, and travel after being a parent is also like if the two, the two of us are on the plane to Germany and, you know, if something happens to us, so like we finally did our wills. So it was sort of like grim <laughs> on the front end <laughs> just to like get there. <laughs> but thank God we got there and we were able to really enjoy it. And it just was, and which I knew was be the case. I've traveled so many other places, but just not sort of internationally on that scale before. So, um, so I, we were talking about where did we want to go for sort of our first international trip. And my husband is global, is German. Um, and so that really was at the top of his list. And I was like, okay, let's do that. And so um, we uh, watched Rick Steves on PBS, the travel show. He's awesome. And he's from your area too, I think. Yeah, he he's from lives, Washington he lives State, right? A stone's throw from us. Yeah, he's over in Edmonds. Oh, wow. Just <laughs> minutes from us. So. Oh, my gosh. So he's, you know, dorky and it's PBS crowd, whatever. But, um, <laughs> but like, that's, that's how we wanted to travel. Like, us on a tour bus with a whole lot of people is just not at all how we want to travel. Mm -hmm. um, and so it, it matched up well with us. And so we, we planned the whole thing. We didn't do any tours or anything like that. Um, and just had a really fantastic time. So did sort of Germany, um, the middle part, the Rhine and, um, down into Bavaria, just us the first week. And then my brother came the middle weekend. We did Oktoberfest that weekend, drank too much, but had a great time, um, and did get to see the open that was opening weekend. So there's uh, several parades. So which this was in Munich. Are so cool in Munich. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Um, and the parades are, you know, the first one is all the pageantry with the, the um, wagons with the big Clydesdale horses carrying the kegs of the new beer and all of the stuff. And they go to one particular tent and the mayor of Munich taps the first keg at noon. And so it's all this pomp and circumstance and um, just, just so different and interesting. And, you know, and then you drink all day and that kind of thing. And then Sunday, you know, Saturday was sort of recovery from Friday or Saturday was the main <laughs> thing. And then Sunday morning, we'd recovered enough to see the other parade, which was more sort of cultural. Um, I don't know, from regions in Germany, and they would have different kind of costumes. And so that was kind cool. of through the streets of Munich. So that was wow. very cool. So, cool. um, and then we traveled from there with my brother who he has been just, he's traveled everywhere 
you know, he has more wanderlust yeah. than okay. I do, Yvonne. And he did Peace Corps um, in between school. So after his master's and before he d- did his MBA, he was in um, Ghana, West Africa. Um, we oh. didn't visit him there. My grandmother, who was in her 80s at the time, she did. Um, my parents did. So wow. lots of wanderlust in my family, for sure. And, yeah. you know, I, I think I was probably not ready, like timing wise we were just getting married. So he, you know, he flew back his middle summer was for our wedding. So Mm. I don't, I just, it didn't feel like it was the right time to be able to travel, but yeah, I think for him, it's always the right time to travel. Well, that's, I was going to kind of ask like where, Mm -hmm. where you feel like you got this from, like, was that both sides? Yeah. Yeah, Uh, absolutely. My, my grandmother and my, and her sister, my great aunt, um, were children of the depression, were both in educate, public education, didn't spend money on anything except travel. And they mm-hmm. both traveled extensively. My grandmother had been to all the continents except for Antarctica. Um, wow. So, she, I mean, just all over the place, a lot in Southeast Asia. She really enjoyed Southeast Asia a lot, Thailand. Um, and I think I sort of just saw, you know, I would hear all the trips you know, when they would come back and see pictures. Um, I don't know if you, did you ever go to the travel logs at Michigan state yes, growing up? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I, that was like a regular thing for us. Like that was a, that was like a Friday night in East Lansing to go to the, cool. what was it like the MSU auditorium or yeah, something? Yeah. The auditorium there. Think, yeah. yeah. The old auditorium. And, people who had recently traveled and, you know, like old school slideshow and they sold, you could bring your own snacks. And I just remember that was such an easily thing to do. Um, But I'm sure that, you know, influenced me as well. And then um, my grandma and grandpa Marshall, after my grandpa retired, that's really the main thing that they did. I mean, they would do sort of a big trip every year and there they did uh, Africa tip to tip. I mean, from South Africa, still during apartheid, which influenced them significantly seeing that and then up, you know, to the Nile in Egypt and all of that. So they really did kind of the whole of Africa in a lot of ways. Um, They also did Yugoslavia back when it was Yugoslavia still. Um, (laughs) And then they did China when China was still really closed. So mid 80s China. Um, wow. Yeah. And so, you know, again, I would hear all the stories and see the slides and, you know, so I, I think it was always there in our family, but, um, I spent more time doing than the United States, you know, kind of in high school, college and after college, mm-hmm. but just never got to Europe. So Germany was the first opportunity kind of at that point to go somewhere much more different and you know further away and all that yeah were you kind of the typical michigander where we had gone to canada but that's about it or yeah i mean canada um what else Uh, you know mexico for cancun cheesy spring break but that's not really (laughs) i mean although julie price and i did go for like a day-long tour to go see the mayan temples and that kind of stuff like because i was like we can't come here and like not do something like i don't want to just drink cheesy drinks all day long every single day like that's that seems like a waste (laughs) so um and then i did do a lot in the caribbean i'd gone sailed in the caribbean with my parents when i was probably 10 um and then i did a oceanography program in college so oh, we cool. were got onto a sailboat in Cape Cod and sailed like east of Bermuda all the way down <laughs> um, and then it's kind of down almost to well to the Grenadines that's which is sort of at the bottom of the chain yeah. closer to South America and then Martinique and then um, the Virgin Islands so got wow. to see so I've done Caribbean Mexico Canada you know just by Michigan more yeah. Um, but just sort of hadn't done South America or Europe or anything else. So yeah. it was, it was time, but Germany, did, it was a lot of fun. <laughs> did you and did you and Jeff, where did you go on your honeymoon? Did you go somewhere international or? No, we, um, we were, we liked road trips 
we were both kind of road trip people. We, you know, we were both still starting out, didn't have a lot of money, still had law school loans and all that. And Mm -hmm. so um, we had driven from North Carolina back to Michigan. He flew over to Milwaukee where he'd gone to college and kind of had a bachelor party sort of weekend with uh-huh. friends there. It's a summer fest in Milwaukee is a big yes. festival with yes. bands. Okay. So yes. did that. And then, you know, came back over to Michigan, got married in Northern Michigan um, mm-hmm. at my cottage or near my cottage. And then, um, so we decided to drive through Niagara Falls, upstate New York, over to Vermont. And then he had never done New England and I had done it a few times. Mm -hmm. So we did um, Vermont, um, stayed with friends in New Hampshire. I mean, it was weird for a honeymoon because we were like stopping and visiting people (laughs) that we'd just seen at our wedding. (laughs) But we were, you know, like we were having fun traveling. So um, New Hampshire, we didn't do Maine. And then we ended up in Cape Cod and, you know, stayed there sort of the longest part um, yes. and then just drove back since we'd driven, driven up in the first place. So, wow. Do you, yeah. feel, do you feel like I, sometimes I talk to people about going on road trips and they're like, oh, really? Where'd you go? And I, I just feel like, I don't know, is it a Midwest thing that we felt comfortable doing road trips because we were in the middle Kind of like, I don't think so. Like a lot of people around here are fascinated by the idea that we would get in a van with our entire family and like Mm -hmm. drive to the Grand Canyon or drive to Florida or drive to wherever. I I think there's a frugality about it that is Midwestern. I think that's a okay. lot of it. I mean, cause yeah. yeah, in the summer, you know, my mom and my grandmother were all on the, um, and my great aunt were all on the school calendar. So we had summers often. And so we'd be at the cottage a lot, but then we would just go for, you know, pack everything up in the station wagon and, you know, ha- pack a couple of tents in the camp stove. And then we would just camp all over the upper peninsula for a week or, mm-hmm. We did Nashville down and back. Um, we did another Cape Cod trip. We did my cousins, my uh, mom's brother and family lived in Denver. So we would drive out to Denver, grab my cousins and then, you know, camp around Denver or around Colorado and then wow. drive back. So it just, I don't know. I, th- I think being in the middle and also just the, the inexpensiveness of it is, and it was not, I don't know, it was, it was never, it was, you know, there was always something to do in the car. It didn't feel sort of tedious or mm-hmm. whatever. And I, it kills me now when I see Tom, you know, watching movies or YouTube or something and not looking out the window and just staring yeah. because that's all there is to do. You know, yeah. there's something, yeah. something in that, that I think they're missing out on. Yeah, I, um, I think like uh, back to, you know, we had that awful maroon and white conversion van, but it was <laughs> awesome for traveling. Like it had this like table, which now would be considered like a projectile. So, but right. it had like a table in the back that had like a cutout in the center and we would sit, Beth and I would sit back there with my grandparents and you could turn the captain's chairs around backwards <laughs> and I'm sure none of this is regulatory now. But Probably not at all. <laughs> we'd sit back there and like play Yahtzee and like throw the <laughs> dice in the middle of the table. And like my poor mom oh my was driving gosh. and we'd be like, Yahtzee. Um, <laughs> I think um, one of the things I think about with travel and, and John McGraw and I talked about this about uh, memories where of travel where you kind of, there was like a vista or someplace you went to that you were like, this, this is better than what I thought it would be. Because a, a lot of times you go someplace like, and you see it and you're like, this is it. Like, <laughs> this is, because a lot of people come out here and they're like, the space needle's that small? And I'm like, yeah, it's actually pretty small. It's not that big. <laughs> the way they show it from one of the vistas, like yeah. it makes it look big, but I'm like, it's actually not really that big. So, so he and I were talking about, you know, what, what's a, and, and I want to ask you, what's a vista or an experience you've had for travel that 
really sticks with you that you were like, in the true sense of the word, it was awesome. Like you were in awe. Like we did. Something. Yeah. Last, last year in the summer, uh, June, early June, we met friends in, we were going to visit them in Wyoming where they have since they moved from Raleigh to Wyoming a few years back. So, mm -hmm. um, we were going to try and get out and see them cause they're right near Yellowstone and everything, but they were, he had a work conference in Edinburgh and we were kind of like, well, if you don't mind, how about we just meet you in Edinburgh and then we can hang out and travel together. You know, their last weekend would be sort of our first weekend. And then, you know, they'd go home and we'd go on. And um, with an only child, that's actually, we, we often have to sort of consider, you know, how can we work kids into this trip so that, you know, he's not stuck with his parents the whole time and gets a little bit of kid time. So it was great because, you know, the, his buddy and his buddy's sister, they all played together wonderfully. And, you know, so we had some of that on the front end and then, you know, a week, the rest of the time. But, um, when we were there, the Highlands were spectacular. Um, I had seen, you know, in my mind, I think of, um, the, the scenes where James Bond's driving his car, um, so, so like Skyfall most recently is where they, there's some other ones earlier that they show that. And so I had some sense of it, but, um, that was pretty spectacular and it was, um, you know, probably a three, three hour drive, driving through the highlands, um, between two different points. And it was just, you know, it's mountainous sort of, but they're, they're very smooth and the moors, no real trees, sheeps everywhere. Um, but just amazing views, just amazing. And we got a, we had a pretty good, decently sunny day for it too, which is hard to get, frankly. So we kind of lucked out. Um, but that was pretty spectacular. That was definitely one that sticks with me. That's really cool. I, um, at, that's one place that I would really like to go that I haven't been to, um, as the, the islands like Ireland, Scotland, mm -hmm. you know, I, I, yeah, didn't, haven't made it there. My parents have been to Ireland a couple times, but, uh, mm -hmm. but I haven't. So we got there... pub food tonight from my favorite restaurant, actually. <laughs> So you're in the mood. But, oh, yeah. perfect. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Um, is it, if you, I mean, is there a place that you've been to that you would say, I'd go back there again and again every single year? Like, um, Cornwall was pretty spectacular. Mm -hmm. And that had the, um, I mean, it's sort of a resorty area anyway. So it's, you know, in England, it is sort of the southern warm place to go on vacation with beaches mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. Um, that was spectacular. Plus, we had sort of distant cousins, family that we've kept up with over the years um, because it's several generations that the family part came to Michigan and part stayed there and some came over and went back and the family continues to sort of keep in touch um, and so I had met them when I was probably in high school and they're, you know, they're probably 70, late sixties or seventies right now. And so we got to see them there and Tom got to meet some of his English cousins that were his age and play with them. And, you know, th that, um, that I think was very cool to watch, but just the, the scenery is spectacular. Um, it's kind of, I mean, it's, um off the beaten path so you definitely it takes a while to get there from London but it was worth we drove it which was interesting on the wrong side and all that but we managed and actually more than the wrong side of the road part is those narrow narrow roads that have the like stone fences that are overgrown with brambles and you're squeezing down and you're just like oh god I hope another car doesn't come <laughs> I mean and everybody just slows down and somebody backs up and you get by each other but it's it's nerve wracking for sure. I think, I think the, <laughs> the driving aspect in different areas is a huge mm -hmm. thing. Like, cause I went to Japan a couple of times and mm -hmm. I, I just remember being like, oh my God, these people are crazy because like we, we would be driving and then like 
it, it's like 20 scooters and motorcycles constantly <laughs> like zooming around you and yeah you know, I was like what uh, like this is okay here like <laughs> so yeah that's half the battle is kind of you know maneuver. yes maneuver yeah strong. well and our marriage works best if I'm navigating and not driving and he's <laughs> driving and not navigating we have our strengths so um, that's familiar. So, yeah, <laughs> so, it's better for everybody if that's how it is. <laughs> is um is there a place that you haven't been yet that you're anxious or, or, or you would like to go to? That's kind of our favorite um, fantasy conversation that we have as a family Especially right now. now. Probably, yes. Yeah. Oh well, really? Because yeah. I mean, you know, Tom is twelve. And you figure we've got maybe another 10 years that he's going to want to travel with us. Mm -hmm. And then he'll be in college and he'll want to travel otherwise, unless mm -hmm. we're paying for it probably. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> but it changes. I mean, you know, that's where it really changed for me was probably in law school where it shifted to traveling with friends versus traveling with family all the time. Mm -hmm. So, so if you've got 10 years, you know, a whole year has been essentially taken and maybe a second depending on what next year looks like. Yeah. And so, you know, he, he had mentioned the other day, like, oh, when is the next time that we're going to go to Disney World? And I was like, well, you know, if we have 10 trips left with you and me and dad together, then where do you want to go? Do you want another trip to Disney? Because like, sure, we can do that. But do you also want to go to his latest? He wants to do the World War II stuff in France, Normandy and all that. Wow. which is interesting and Paris which is not at the top of my list um yeah. so I you know that's his choice Jeff is really interested in Eastern Europe so Hungary and Poland and that kind of thing um mine would probably be the Netherlands and Belgium mm -hmm. um so I don't know which of us will win and which will be the, <laughs> the next one that we're gonna go to but um, Jeff and I have talked about going back to Germany at Christmas time, just to do it in a different way than September, um, and to do the markets and that kind of stuff would be fun. And, um, so maybe that's on the list We're Liverpool soccer fans. So maybe the sort of the rest of it, we did Scotland and we did London South, but we didn't sort of do in the middle. So that's probably another whole trip. So yeah. I, yeah, hard, hard to pick which one, although none of them are bad choices. It's just sort of, which one do we do next? So yeah. who's, who's going to win? <laughs> who's going to win? Yeah. I, what is, I, I was going to say, let me ask you, cause where, where are places that you've been that have been amazing that you would recommend or, um, you know, I would say kind of the two, if, I mean, I've been to, I did the whole backpack through Europe thing after okay. college, which was great. It was a that month and cool. a half of just going wherever. Um, and I went to Japan twice. Um, and we went, we went to Mexico for our honeymoon and stuff, okay. but, uh, you know, I would say Mexico was amazing just because I've never seen water like that. I thought mm -hmm. it just was like, I'm like, this is what it's like on a postcard. Like I yeah. was so fascinated. I'd never really been, like kind of on that end of the Caribbean and been like, wow, it's actually, it, it's truly aqua. And like, mm -hmm. um, so that was amazing. I would say, um, Cinque Terre, Italy mm -hmm. okay. was one of my favorite places I've ever been to because it just seemed surreal. Like I okay. was like, I called it Bugs Bunny Italy. Cause it was like, it was like a cartoon of like what I thought Italy looked like. Like it was mm -hmm. these little mountain towns with like different painted houses. There was a school mm -hmm. bus that went by and it literally said school of Bussa on the <laughs> side. And I was like, really? Like, um, and then uh, Japan, I think too. Um, one of the times I was there, we went to like a mountain town, uh, kind of north of Tokyo and okay. like an hour north and there were all these beautiful like shrines and it was snowing and you could go into these little teeny tiny super teeny tiny um restaurants that like it was like a mom and dad 
running it, there was like two tables and like a bar and you would go in and whatever they were making was what you ate. Mm -hmm. And then outside there would be a vending machine with like the Asahi beer, like the big giant cans. Uh And so you would buy your beer from the vending machine outside and then bring (laughs) it in. And then they would make like whatever they were making. And then you just ate whatever they were making. And Hmm. those kind of experiences were the ones where I was like, wow, this is really, this is cool. Like Mm -hmm. this is, this is why people travel. Yeah. To kind of have those moments of like discovery um, where it's not, it's beyond the standard that you're used to, I think Mm -hmm. is huge. Um, And, and I will say the other thing, what we're talking about Michigan, I, John, my husband is from New Jersey and uh, going to school in South Bend, South Bend is not really a great representation (laughs) of the Midwest in terms of beauty. (laughs) So, I mean, I love South Bend. I loved going to Notre Dame. It was great, but uh, I was trying to convince him one time. I'm like, you know, the Midwest is actually, there's some cool stuff. And he was like, really? Yeah. (laughs) And I said, yeah. And so I think um, 10 years ago, we came back for a football game and then we left mm. Marie with my parents and we went up to the UP. Nice. We went to Pictured Rocks and like to Quamanon Falls and we ate pasties and like mm-hmm. did the whole thing. And he was like, this is gorgeous. And I'm like, right? <laughs> like, yes. <laughs> and Pictured Rocks, like I, I had been there once before and I, I don't think I realized how incredibly gorgeous that is I mean Mm -hmm. it really is amazing like the water is this icy beautiful blue like yeah yeah, it's like Mm -hmm. nothing you've ever seen and I I said it's like the Grand Canyon in a glacier of water like Mm -hmm. that's that's the way I can describe it but so I'm like no it's Michigan's beautiful (laughs) it's a gorgeous state so I know know. I feel like a one woman um like tourism bureau for michigan representative sometimes like all of the people i work with and know here in north carolina like especially in the summer (laughs) you know i'm just like oh there's just no place better and then they see my pictures and they're like oh and i'm like yes (laughs) you're the you're the tim (laughs) allen of like (laughs) i know seriously (laughs) oh my gosh in the winter it's a harder sell (laughs) yeah well that's true (laughs) I was like, yeah, it's not, it's not always perfect, but no. I mean, yeah, the my summers, mom sends pictures yeah. of the sunrises and sunsets at their lake. And I'm like, mm-hmm. nothing beats a Michigan sunrise or a sunset. It's yeah. so pretty. So, it is. Yeah. It it's, is. We're, we're lucky to have <laughs> grown up in such a beautiful place. So definitely. Um, one last question. If, um, if you have you ever had a moment where you've been able to possibly move abroad? Mm. <sighs> um, I've or, thought or about Jeff it too, or yeah, yeah. Um, I think what kind of has firmed up in our minds since our trip to um, Scotland last year. So we did England, and we did Scotland, and we did Germany. Um, you would, and we saw it in all three places that lots of pensioners, retirees seem to rent the, like sort of the smaller mobile homes that are more easily drivable, but, you know, have a bed in the back and the kitchen and all that. Mm -hmm. Um, And that's the way that so many of them seem to travel. And there's lots of, you know, nice looking little camper campgrounds. And I was like, you know what, that would be so great to do. And so, I mean, it's probably something that you need to just do after we're retired so that we have as much time as we want to do it. But I I really think that that's going to be kind of our, our first post-retirement, um, escape, I guess, would be to just hop in one of those and do as much of Europe as we possibly can. And, you know, just do it in a low key way, not tour groups and all that. And, you know, pull into somewhere 
explore around. We're both lovers of history. So, you know, there's always that mm-hmm. aspect too. And, um, and then just move on to the next place and see where it leads us. So um, I think, you know, it's not really moving abroad, but I think that, you know, that would be a, you know, five, six, seven month thing at the, at the, at the minimum. Yeah. When, yeah. You know, to really get a chance to just see where life takes you. Be yeah. Cool. Kind of float around it. That sounds great. Yeah. Good. Thanks, Christy. Absolutely. Love hearing your stories. <laughs> Thanks so much. I love having an excuse to talk about this. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Thanks, Christy.